So I was recently reading an article in the Wall Street Journal that was saying that, that central banks don't know where the world's cash is going. So many governments have more cash in circulation than ever before, and the central banks uh, don't know where all of it is. And uh, as an example of this, they say that there's approximately 150 billion euros in Germany that the government believes is being hoarded. 60% of the U.S.'s cash in circulation, which comes to about $900 billion of, of the total $1.7 trillion in circulation, is estimated to have left the United States, and the United States has no idea where it is. And the, the article basically says that uh, you know central banks desperately need to know where this money is so that they can control how much cash is in circulation uh, properly. And the article, while the article acknowledges that a lot of this money is being hoarded by, by people uh, in order to preserve their wealth, it strongly insinuates that a lot of the cash is being used in illicit activities like tax evasion. Uh, and I think that's a really stupid argument. Um, I think if you read most of the reports on money laundering and, and tax evasion and stuff like that, you'll see that the vast majority of, of tax evasion and money laundering takes place within the financial system, within the banking system. I mean, just look at the penalties that, ba that banks wind up having to pay every few years for helping a cartel la launder the drug money. Uh, I mean, I just don't see how you can move that much cash um, to do illegal business in, in, to the, in today's day, day and age. So I think that illicit activity argument is, is not a very strong one. My guess is most of the money uh, is being hoarded by people and with very good reason. Now, before I get into that reason, I think that, that this argument that the money is being used for illicit activity um, is sort of in furtherance of the government's argument that cash is bad and you should sort of live in this virtual currency world. And I think that's precisely the reason why people are hoarding the cash because they don't want to live in this virtual money world where your money can very easily, where your virtual money can very easily be manipulated, frozen, or even deleted by, by banks and governments, even though you've done absolutely nothing wrong. And I think if we lived in a world where you were innocent until proven guilty, probably people wouldn't have so much concerns, but we don't. We live in a world where you're guilty, convicted, and almost hanged until you prove yourself innocent, and not just by governments, but by the banks themselves, which have basically become quasi-governmental uh, agencies. And I think that this is a very sad state of affairs that people and businesses more and more don't trust the banking system. They don't trust the financial system. And I think that's with very, very good reason. I mean, look at how governments have, have, and, and banks have behaved, especially over the last five years. I mean, banks routinely hold up uh, inbound and outbound wire transfers uh, until you provide them with some subjective uh, due diligence to satisfy them that this is a legitimate transaction. There's no standard that says, hey, if you give us this, that will be proof to us that this is a legitimate transaction and the transaction can proceed. No, it's kind of, you just have to keep throwing information at them until, you know, hopefully they accept that this is a legitimate transaction, which it almost always is. I mean, it's a minuscule amount of illegitimate activity that goes, goes through the banking system. Uh, and, and oftentimes the bank will freeze entire accounts until you know this this subjective uh, due diligence is is is, is provided and, and hopefully satisfies them that the transaction and the banking relationship can continue. And how can you reliably do business if you're a legitimate business like most are when you constantly have to deal with um, uh, you know transactions being held up, banking relationships threatened? Uh, and on the individual side, that's the same thing. I mean, moving money around to purchase homes, to, to purchase yachts, planes, whatever it is going to be, has become very difficult. I mean, if you look at most European countries, uh, I mean, even taking a thousand dollars, sorry, a thousand euros out of your bank account or depositing a thousand euros in cash into your bank account has become impossible. If you want to take a thousand euros out of the money that you earned and paid taxes on to go burn it or throw it in the air, or do whatever you want to do with it, you should be able to do that without having to explain to the bank why. Um, and, and the banks and the governments will often argue, 
well, if, if you've done nothing wrong, you have nothing to hide. And again, I would agree with that if we lived in a innocent until proof, proven guilty world, which we don't. The problem is that uh, the governments often will come in and seize your money uh, based on an alleged wrongdoing. Uh, and then you have to fight the government with two hands behind your back uh, because you don't have the, the funds to do so, uh, even if you're completely innocent. They shouldn't be able to take the money until they prove that you've actually done something wrong. And you also see things happen like this. I mean, I, I saw this happen personally where, where, in the, where in the United States, the IRS literally cleaned out somebody's bank account two days before their payroll. And all the payroll checks bounced. The IRS eventually gave the money back, but they certainly didn't compensate the guy for all the banking charges and, and ill will that he now had with, with his employees. Uh, and then you also see things happen like what happened with the U.S. a few years ago with these suspicious activity uh, reports where, for those of you that don't know, a suspicious activity report is when, um, you know, somebody has suspicious activity on their bank account, the banking authorities and the, the, the banks in the U.S. are required to, to file these suspicious activity reports with, with the banking authorities. And what was happening is a lot of uh, businesses that were completely legitimate that operate oftentimes in cash, like dry cleaners, liquor stores, businesses like this, were depositing cash into the bank accounts. And so the banks filed the suspicious activity reports and the government came in and seized the money um, because the people couldn't prove where it came from. And the people were like, it came from my business. I'm a dry cleaner, I accept cash, I'm in the liquor store, it's a cash business, like what do you want? And so they couldn't prove it, so the government just kept the money and it eventually took uh, Congress to intervene for these poor people to get their money back years down the road. And these were completely legitimate business people, most of them small businesses, some that were put out of business. And if they would have just kept that money in cash and not put it in the banking system, they probably would have been fine and would have been able to keep their businesses. And so this is exactly the point that I'm trying to make. Because of the government's fight uh, uh, against money laundering and tax evasion and everything else, uh, which is really a minuscule amount of, of, of the, the actual transactions that go through the financial system, they've basically destroyed people's trust um, in the financial system. And so people are hoarding cash. I mean, people are looking for ways uh, to preserve the value of their wealth uh, uh, in a way that they can control it, which is why you see art prices so high, why you see this cash hoarding, why you see large jewelry purchases, why you see all of these things. And, and I mean, this is one of the things that, that, that I hear a lot of my clients talk about on a regular basis. Uh, and I know that a lot of uh, people that I work with that I know that are in the same industry, that is a major concern of their clients as well, is what can I do with my money that it's protected, that I have control over it, uh, and that it's not somehow gonna be frozen or taken even though I've done nothing wrong. Uh, and that's a really sad state of affairs. And I, I really hope that, um, you know, the governments and the banks can do something to restore um, some type of, of, of confidence in the financial system because this just isn't conducive to, to, to business uh, or, or a successful economy. But uh, I guess until then, uh, you know, people need to keep looking for ways to, to preserve their wealth. and. Um, that, I think a lot of that's going to be in, in hoarding cash. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the topic. Peace.